And a huge number of systems related to mood regulation, so-called executive function, the ability to organize one's thoughts, plan, and execute plans. It's abundantly clear that cannabis and THC in particular dramatically disrupt those processes. I am a perfect candidate for exactly what he was talking about. Hello, everybody. On today's video, I am going to review the great Dr. Andrew Huberman discussing cannabis and the impact on the adolescent brain. As you know, if you've watched my previous videos on cannabis addiction, you will know a little bit about my own past experience. So this is a topic close to my heart personally and professionally, as I started using cannabis at 12 years old prior to going through puberty, I guess. And it certainly had tremendous impacts on my brain, my brain development and my life. So let's listen to what Dr. Huberman has to say, and I will comment as we go along. Cannabis is a unique instance in which nowadays we are hearing, yes, it's becoming legal in a number of areas. And we talked earlier about why that's probably a good thing in most circumstances, but that we aren't just hearing that cannabis is safe or it's not just being implied that cannabis is safer, but many more people are talking about the positive effects of cannabis without a lot of discussion about the negative effects of cannabis. And I realize that saying this is going to upset some people out there because I know that there are a number of people who fought very hard for the legalization process and I want to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge the many known positive effects of cannabis in adults with very occasional use provided it is delivered safely and in the safe context and setting and with legality. That is entirely distinct from the issue of whether or not cannabis is safe for the developing brain and body. Again, I'm not demonizing anybody for using cannabis, but I wanna make the point very simply and very directly. It is far and away a different circumstance for the brain, for an individual to be 25 years or older and using cannabis in whatever form occasionally or maybe even frequently than it is for a young person aged 14 to 25 to be using cannabis either by smoking or vaping or by edible or any other form on the brain and body. It's absolutely clear that the brain continues to develop at least until age 25 and that a huge number of systems related to mood regulation, so-called executive function, the ability to organize one's thoughts, plan and execute plans, essentially to become a functional human being, right? That's one portion of becoming a functional human being, but certainly an essential one. All of that relies on the fine tuning of this neural circuitry that we've been talking about up until now. And it's abundantly clear that cannabis and THC in particular dramatically disrupt those processes. I am a perfect candidate for exactly what he was talking about. So I want to emphasize his point that this isn't about demonizing cannabis. This isn't about saying it's good, bad, right, wrong. I do appreciate him pointing out the fact that there is often only positive discussion around the legalization of cannabis, its potential positive effects for people and et cetera. We rarely ever hear about the negative consequences and oftentimes for people like myself who become addicted to cannabis, as I described in a video on this channel in the past, the shame and the guilt and the sense of I'm a pathetic human being because I'm addicted to cannabis or it's impacting me negatively and I know that but I'm too scared to say anything about it. There's a lot of people out there that that is true for. and. As Dr. Huberman explains here, that is not part of the societal discourse around the use of cannabis these days. So just to bring our attention to that, this is about us as individuals. What is it for us that works, that does not work? And we need to learn to make decisions for ourselves based on our own needs, inadequacies, goals, desires, not about what other people think or not about how other people can use it safely or etc. The other piece here that certainly was true for me 
is the disruption of our prefrontal cortex or executive functioning skills as we mature through puberty and into adulthood. I was high 24 hours a day from about 12 and a half, 13 till 30 years old. And that disrupted my executive functioning greatly. My ability to be a human being in the world, to quote unquote, be a normal functioning contributor to society. So I'm glad he's bringing attention to this idea of the impact on us as adolescents or as young people. And it's no joke. It is no joke. So let's keep listening. To a particular paper, this is one of the more impactful papers in this area in recent years. This is a paper published in Lancet Psychiatry in 2022. The title is Association of Cannabis Potency with Mental Ill Health and Addiction, a Systematic Review. There are a number of very important points in this very fine paper. Lancet Psychiatry is one of the premier medical journals out there. And they evaluated a huge number of studies. They actually looked at more than 4,000 studies. They selected the ones that were only the most rigorous in terms of study design and analysis and rigor of conclusions. And they looked at how early use of cannabis impacted later probability of development of psychosis and other psychiatric conditions. And the takeaways from this study are very clear. First of all, chronic cannabis use, so more than twice per week, has consistently been associated with mental health disorders. I'm pulling some phrases directly from the paper. Heavy cannabis use, meaning cannabis use more frequent than twice per week, has been associated with four times the risk of psychosis later in life, in particular, schizophrenia and bipolar-like episodes. Both bipolar disorder and schizophrenia have a very, very strong genetic component, there's a 30, 30, 30 times greater likelihood that you'll have bipolar disorder if you have a first relative who has bipolar disorder. And then it's also the case that using cannabis, especially during adolescence and the teen years and up until age 25, create a four times greater risk of psychosis for those that have a predisposition to bipolar disorder and or schizophrenia. I'm just gonna jump in here to comment on that because it is also very relevant to my situation. I developed some mental health disorder, certainly as a result of my cannabis use. I have ADHD. It's hard to know how my cannabis use impacted that. That's really secondary to the fact that my brother, who also was a chronic cannabis user, did develop schizophrenia and psychosis. And that speaks directly to what's being said here around the potential impacts. And I see this a lot with my clients who have predispositions in their families. And sometimes people will often have really difficult highs, so to speak, where they get very paranoid or they get into really dysfunctional behavior when they get high or shortly after they get high. So certainly that's true for me and my family. What's being said here, my brother lives with schizophrenia now and whether or not he would have developed schizophrenia had he not smoked weed. Who knows? But the fact is he was, <laughs> I think he said, I can't remember the word Huberman used here, but twice a week, okay? My brother and I, and I started younger, again, at 12 years old, we were high all day, every day for, for me, 17 years, for my brother, probably five, six years before he'd started developing psychosis and schizophrenia. So that is certainly true for us. It is no joke, okay? And again, if you can smoke it and it doesn't impact you, that's wonderful. All good for you. This is just about bringing a bit more of a balanced discussion to this situation here. And um, let's stop lying to ourselves about what's going on. Okay, I'll continue the video here. Now, I don't hear very much about this in the media. This paper got some attention and then it sort of... Uh, got swept away. I don't think that was an intentional sweeping way. There's just a lot of events in the world, as you uh, well know. But I think it's a particularly important set of findings because obviously it, in looking at so many studies, it distills out the strongest findings that are out there and really pulls the, the, the consistent messages that are arriving from all these different studies. And as they point out, and again, I'm paraphrasing here, this is the first systematic review of the association of cannabis potency and all of the data point to a very clear conclusion, which is the more potent the THC concentration, 
the higher probability of developing psychosis or a major depressive episode or a major anxiety disorder later in life. That should be of particular concern because we know, we are absolutely clear about the fact that with the advent of all these new strains of cannabis and with the engineering and availability of cannabis at much higher potency, meaning THC potency, the risk of psychosis is going up and up and is likely to continue going up unless something is done to reduce the frequency of cannabis use to zero, ideally, or to very low frequency, very low potency in adolescents and teens and people age 25 or younger. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this message because first of all, it's alarming. And second of all, as I mentioned earlier, the statistics tell us that the greatest number of people that are starting to use cannabis are in the age bracket of 16 to 24. Many of them are functional in other areas of life. They are students, they are employed, etc. But when you couple that with the fact that the most frequent adopters of cannabis use are in this age bracket of 16 to 24, they're twice as likely to use as other individuals or to start using cannabis as our other individuals. Plus the general perception out there because of the way that cannabis is discussed in the media and by sports figures and by celebrities and by, by politicians, et cetera, that it's not as bad as alcohol and maybe not that bad and maybe even has health benefits, then you're essentially setting up a system where young people are far more likely to adopt and continue cannabis use without realizing these serious health consequences that await them later. All right. Yeah. Just to comment on the last piece there, he didn't explicitly say it, Another thing that I talk about often when I'm in schools or in large groups with young people is the weed that our, I guess it's changing a bit now. I'm the first generation of kids who really grew up with access to what Huberman is describing as this high potency cannabis. So I am 41 years old. For my parents or previous generations, their association to cannabis was much lighter or much more friendly, you could say, or less uh, worrisome because the cannabis that was being smoked all the way up into the late 80s, early 90s, the THC level, you know, I'm going to do my best here, somewhere between 2 to 7% THC level. When I could get my hands on it, and I tried all the time to, the cannabis that I started smoking in the 90s and beyond and what kids have access to now is up sometimes between 20 and 30%. So the potency has almost quadrupled. And there was a great show, if anyone knows Dr. David Suzuki, he has a show on the CBC in Canada called The Nature of Things, and he did a uh, deep dive into the cannabis stuff here. And what's happened with all the legalization and the genetically modified strands is that they have basically bred out the antipsychotic components of the plant, which is often CBD. I don't know the details, but the growers or the genetic modifiers of these compounds have taken out the antipsychotic aspects of the plant and they've increased the psychoactive, which is the THC. So not only has the THC risen, but we've reduced the content of the antipsychotic aspects of the plant. And that is very dangerous for people who are susceptible to these types of mental illnesses. And case in point, my family, I, I didn't develop schizophrenia. My brother did. We both used a lot of cannabis. I started a few years younger than he did. Nevertheless, it's no joke. Okay, for some people, fine, go for it. Do your thing. This is not about judgment. This is just about helping bring more awareness to the situation. So I hope you found that helpful. Please comment, subscribe, like, do all those things, share this video. I'd love to have more discussions around these topics. Other than that, I wish you well. Take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.